Well, thank you guys for doing this. Uh, I know it's probably getting late over on the other end of the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, I don't know, wanting to hang out, even if it's kind of late in the evening. And I know it's gonna, just going to get later. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah it, it, it's okay. I think it, it helps that we're in lockdown, so we have some interaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I would like to make this as cool and casual and informal as we can be. Uh, I like, I, don't, I hate the word interview, right? Because I don't think that's right. I just think it's, hey, us just hanging out and chatting, having a conversation. Um, is that cool with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The stuff yeah, that I, no, no, that sounds pretty wild to me. The stuff that I put together <laughs> isn't by any means meant to be like a, a strict script or we don't have to stick to that. Like you guys can answer any part or talk to any part at anything and we'll just kind of roll with it. It's a flow, whatever. And obviously if yeah. there's anything that you like don't want heard or said, or you accidentally released some deep, dark spoiler, uh, we can obviously like edit out as long as you're still cool with this going online. Yeah. So, uh, Ben, you got the AWS password ready to leak that? <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> Should we just kind of like roll into it, get right started? Can I badger you with questions or? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Sweet. Okay, so just to kind of like set the stage, um, give like the whole foundational baseline for the whole conversation, uh, we're talking a lot about Try Hack Me, your baby. Um, can you give me a little bit of a background on what Try Hack Me is? How do you define it as the creators, hosts, maintainers, developers, etc.? Um, so whenever whenever we're explaining Try Hack Me to people, we're always the the way we describe it is that it's a learning platform that makes it easier to break into security. So our our idea for Try Hack Me has always been that we want people to come to Try Hack Me whenever they think of learning security. So Try Hack Me should be their first port of call. Um, yeah, just like I think one Ashu and I met like a few years ago, and it's the, sort of the common thing of you know a problem that we actually wanted to solve. We were thrown into a learning environment which just wasn't really helpful, was really buggy, didn't really work, didn't really teach us anything, um, and sort of we wanted to find a fix for that solution, and that was you know having a yeah an all-in-one sort of virtualized lab for learning and breaking into security. Yeah. So that was kind of like the idea or inspiration behind it. Like you just wanted, hey, there wasn't something exactly like what you wanted already out there. Oh no, go on, go on. Yeah. So Ben, like Ben, Ben mentioned, Ben and I met. We met security internship, and um, obviously part of the internship was doing some security training on stuff like web apps, networks, and we like we found it quite hard to learn because. It was at that point, it was just, here's an IP address, here's an application, right? And like, it's quite fun doing challenges sometimes, but, but, and you like like going down the rabbit holes, like really good fun. But like when you're learning, it's a very inefficient process. You'll have like a million tabs of Google open, you'll have like a, min a million terminal windows open running a million different tools. And that, that's, not very, that's not a very efficient learning process. So this, this all started as, as a side project, um, more for us to, you know, easily, to easily learn and then and then ever since, and I think that was around around August, September, and then the first, or at least the first public version released in November, December, right then? Yeah, yeah, we, we had a, felt like a prototype within sort of three, four months. We pushed it out and um, yeah, it was, it was like this really, really weak sort of basic application where you could deploy one machine. It was like, I don't think there was even rooms there. We had like a credit based system. And that's when we, we met Dark, actually. I think you, you came in, Dark, we, we, you, you shot us a message and said, hey, this is really cool what you're doing. And I think it was just after the credit based system, right? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I joined and I could still, still see the messages in chat in uh, the juice shop room when we had chat still of the credit based system. <laughs> That's how I knew about it because otherwise I had no idea that we used to have that. Yeah, yeah, the iterations it's gone through is crazy. Yeah, I think that's like yeah. a great thing as well for, for Try Hack Me is we're not afraid to we constantly change things, like make different iterations and, you know, and push it out to the community and getting feedback from it. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get the... It depends on what the feedback is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get the feedback and response that you were hoping for, or was it a surprise? So it, it, I think it was all—it was all honestly quite surprising because we never, we never intended for Try Hack Me to be used by a lot of people. It was always just for me and Ben to like 
get machines on there hack easily. So, so when, we, when we saw people starting to use it, we're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. People actually want to use Try Hack Me. Um, so, so, so it, it was quite exciting, you know, to have built something and to have like people actually using it. Yeah, definitely. I guess I, I know a semblance of that feeling kind of like when you create something and then you see real people using it, it's like, wow, that's a, that's a pretty cool <laughs> fulfilling feeling. Yeah. You, you find lots of bugs like that you never thought would even be possible. <laughs> oh, yeah. could exist. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be like, wait, what? Calling, yeah. Calling your website try hack me doesn't help at all. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, actually the, the community part of it wasn't like, it wasn't actually ever sort of, we never thought about doing a, like having a community aspect to it. It was only until we met dark uh, star and John that, you know, you were like, right, I think this is great. Let me take, you know, control of the community aspect of it and build that up. And I think that's what really sort of um, gave us the initial, um, so you saying that's when the trouble right. started? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it was. Yeah, I, I think the community's been key in, in all of this, and it was all up to Dark, all from Dark that we, um, yeah, mm -hmm. started it really. Oh, so the whole yeah. user submissions and like community involvement, I guess, submitting things and, and adding to the whole environment and I don't know, all of the rooms that Try Hack Me has—that was kind of your hard charge, Dark. Is that right? To some extent, when I joined and I I put it up on Twitter a while ago, like the initial messages I had with Ben that um, I, I thought with doing the submission process, I had thought it had been a very community driven thing. I guess looking back on it now, I and maybe Ashu or Ben can speak to this, that it I guess it was originally more driven by just adding these boxes up there and having it up there so that you could teach others with that. Um, I thought it was just a, hey, you want to throw something up here? You go for it. And I just kind of went wild. And I started throwing a bunch of things up and just yeah. ended up. Uh... Yeah, totally. Go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah. So like like Dark said, like like the feature of like having people upload their own boxes was something that was quite intended. But I think Dark drove a lot of the a lot of the engagement behind the feature and a lot of the processes. So stuff like how do we actually get people to upload? How like how do we how do we encourage them? How do we get people to push out specific content? Um, I think the whole process and getting the community to engage with uploading their boxes was all his like his baby um, through a large part. And I guess a lot of that on my end was just working with people and you know having friendly competition with people in the community to create better content that uh, initially so I started out just a normal user and I was just uploading content to the site and I wanted to be the number one on the scoreboard. And for a little while I was, and I still claim that that's my throne, um, as it should be. Uh, but we had our, one of the users come along, Paradox, that he's one of our moderators now, that um, I was making content and he would push me to be better on it. That he would come in and say, can you clarify on this? Or he'll come through and start challenging me for getting first place and things like that. And he did knock me off the throne, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, it ended up being a lot of just continual improvement on that end as far as the community goes and taking what I had learned previously. I Before I had gotten involved with Try Hack Me, I had done streaming independently, um, ended up dropping it because I just didn't enjoy it in the long term uh, for what I had been doing it with and taking like the base rule set that I made with that uh, kind of formed the base of like the rules for the community and just built from there. So Dark, you were kind of, hey, the community guy. Is it community manager? Is that the right, I guess, role or title or whatever? I have a weird title. I, I think I'm technically content director right now um, and kind of community head. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. I don't know. Do you guys want to clarify? It's kind of nebulous most of the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that's perfect. You, I guess you also tend to wear a lot of hats. So it's, I think community definitely i think content also very strong and then i guess yeah you help us a lot here and there so it's like a very overarching role yeah most of the time the contents i guess it's split pretty or pretty evenly between us i'd say as you 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 do a lot of the content as well especially with our creators program directing people and mm -hmm. helping us uh, keep the vision there of you know maybe we don't have content on a specific topic how can we push that forward and push for change in that positive growth I think that works out really nicely because it, it really is shared between all of us. Mm -hmm. So Ashu and Ben, what do you guys kind of consider your role or what do you actively work on? What are you working on now, et cetera? Um, so 
I think Ben does a lot of the dev work and I and I do a lot of the, I guess, the business side of things. But it's quite cool because because of this complementary set of skills, we tend to do a little bit of everything. Nice. Um, so so I've, I've picked up like an insane amount of like dev skills from Ben. He's like, he's like guided me through a lot of it. And, yeah, um, and, and actually and, all, the, all the business side of things and sort of, yeah, as Dark was saying, the vision has come from a shoe. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so we, so, so it's it's quite cool that like we get to work on a lot together, which is like which is like the fun part of like try hack me is that we get to learn about so many things that are outside our outside our like skills of interest or talent. Um, and I, mm. as to what we're currently working on, um, I guess yeah, Ben jump in here in case I miss anything. But one of the, like I guess the major thing is always is um, scalability. So I'm, I'm sure you've noticed, or like, or you've even seen that, like, through Discord, we, we get a lot of comments and a lot of feedback from people. Um, so we just want to make sure that their experience, like, with stuff like performance, is is best. So we, I think, the past few weeks has been very fixing performance and scalability issues. Right, Ben? Yeah, yeah, it's something that I'd um, not had thought I could have come around so quickly. It was one of your videos, John, that sort of when you had a lot of popularity and we just saw things break um and we we're like wait what um so, uh -oh. yeah the, yeah yeah the sort of the um you know having some what was it the basic problems. pen testing video that just blew up and it i still think that thing's blowing up yeah, yeah. that's at like three hundred and thirty thousand views it, it's just skyrocketed into the number one video i have <laughs> yes that was a, a, a huge driving force so you know thanks for that was a, a great video um but yeah as, as, as you said scalability sort of you know bettering the user experience and um, like number one is like the great thing was our community like speaking to them and seeing what you know can be improved and made better um, on the platform and i think that's primarily the our focus right now cool cool when you guys were i guess getting started what sort of rooms or activities or what things did you try to put in place to like really make the I don't know, the baseline of the platform to encourage other people or just like, here, this is our first impression for the world. What did you put in there and why? Um, so I think if, if, if not one of the first rooms, I think one of like the earliest rooms was the OWASP shoe shop room. Um, because, because we know that like at, at that time we were like interns and learning about security stuff. And that's like, and, and Jew shop is like the holy grail of web security or mm. wasp in general. So we were like, oh, you know, one, if you had to set this up on your machine, it's like, it's just time consuming. And two is that people, whenever people are doing Jew shop, there's no like guidance. So we want to show people that, look, you can actually come access a machine with a click of the button and actually learn how to do it. Um, so I think Jew shop was one of like the first ones. And then um, uh, I, I, can't, I can't seem to remember any of the Wait, other early ones. I think Dark basic, was, oh, ahead, basic, pe basic pen testing. Mm -hmm. that, it was blue, and that was the very first room Dark did, basic pen testing mm -hmm. in the OWASP juice shop. And I remember the OWASP juice shop, the, the guy who made the VM for the, the OWASP juice shop came on and gave us feedback. And yeah, I just remember him saying like how cool it was. I think that was just... That's awesome. Of a small piece of and then I like the just shovelware that I put out. That so originally I started with blue, and then I started making the uh, red primer series and the uh, the primer series on the whole. That I had the idea that you know what, what is going to be a good core, and it's going to be you know covering the basics is everyone has to learn the basics. Everyone has to learn how to use something like Metasploit or Nmap. You know, where do you what do you use if you don't have Nmap? You're gonna be up a creek for a little while, but. When did you guys start to see the platform kind of, like, guess, take off? Or, like, when did a ton of users, okay, start to work through rooms, start to create rooms? When did it just skyrocket for you guys? Do you feel like it has at this point? Yeah, so I think I think the past, the, well, the early, the latest growth spurt has been, was December 2019. So that was when we first challenges, the advent of cyber challenges. Um, so that was, that was 30 days of very intense box making. <laughs> and we had, and like, yeah, since then it's been, it's been really, really crazy. Um, I remember the day we released the first um, Christmas challenge and we already had like 2000 people on the page at like 8 PM. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And we were deploying a challenge and yeah. Ben and I were like live and we were like, oh my God, this is so stressful. Um, <laughs> and we're on and fire. I think, I think ever since then, 
yeah ever since then it's been it's been going quite well cool 2019 december 2019 right so like just about the start of this year almost right yeah yeah and i think before that we were we were focusing a lot on students so we ran we ran a university ctf challenge just more specifically in the uk so we had that in i think in i think twice across that year once in october and once in march and that and that did like quite well right then i think you can speak yeah. more to that no no that those went really well um you have, I think the October hack back to our university event had 27 unis um, and everyone competing to get to the top. That was, that was really good. That was, yeah. Great fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Can you, Can you tell, me tell me a little bit, a little bit or, or I mean, whatever you're totally comfortable and cool with sharing. I don't want you to give away like any like trade secrets or stuff behind the curtain, but what, what, what can you share, I guess, a little bit about the infrastructure? What kind of the tech is behind it to make the whole platform work between spawning virtual machines in the cloud, but behind bringing machine up and down kind of at whim? What, what tech is behind that, if I may? Um, so um, a lot of the um, infrastructure is hosted using, uh, it's all using cloud infrastructure. And I think that's been a huge advantage not having to maintain and sort of manage our own servers uh, that's been i think one of the like a key thing um to, you know to the success of well, what it is at the moment the small success it is of try hack me at the moment um you being able to you know have these base images that you can just sort of spin up and terminate instantly um has it, been it's been great that there's so many sort of cogs to make this whole thing work um but a lot of it has been configured um in the cloud um as for our web application, it uses a variety of different, uh, it uses the mean stack uh, without the Angular. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah. Sweet. Is that kind of a, you said mean so stack, mean, is that right? With You said without Angular? So is it a lot of JavaScript or what kind of languages do you typically work in for when you're building, for when you're creating? Um, yeah, good question. So um, it's uh, primarily Node.js. Um, and uh, Mongo uh, and Express, and um, there's we have other sort of um, sort of scripts involved, um, to sort of uh, yeah, as a small piece in the in the whole puzzle to make the um, the platform function. Um, but the majority of the web application's been programmed in uh, Node.js. That's cool. That's cool. Is that kind of your your weapon of choice? Is that like your strongest sword? Because I, I am so bad with JavaScript and Node. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of. Um, it was like I'm I'm still at university, and it was like one of the units covered a couple of years ago. Um, and I remember making like the proof of concept was I was like, okay, I've, I had experience with it like a couple months back, and sort of went from there, and it worked. So we were like, cool, and Node and JS is up and coming, and sort of becoming more and more popular, and so we just kind of ran with it. Sweet. Uh, yeah, that's probably a really good one to choose considering, I mean, like you said, it's just be becoming like the number one thing. <laughs> yeah, like the industry standard. Yeah, it, mm. yeah, super popular. And the amount of libraries in the community and sort of the feedback around Node.js is, is, is great as well because, you know, having a Stack Overflow page, if you've got the horrible problem, is really helpful. <laughs> nice, nice. How much of the how much of the build out is automated? I mean, between like you said, between working in the cloud, um, I'm, I'm sure you've got obviously your Node.js and stuff in there. How is is it deployment completely automated, or are you still clicking around in whatever GUI for AWS or Azure or digital whatever whatever it's in? Um, oh, go on, Ashish, you answer this one. Yeah, yeah. So our all our all our deployments to the cloud are are very API driven. Nice. So they're yeah. So which which makes them like almost fully automated apart from the you know the debugging here and there which makes it which makes it quite easy to build into a web application part of me is thinking about how that api stuff goes because I, I when i think of okay spinning up some my cloud infrastructure i'm using cheesy things like terraform or decorating things with ansible and vagrant or what what does that look like on your side or is that just hey strictly restful api calls yeah, yeah. So it's RESTful API calls. Um, so when we initially started, we initially saw when we we actually thought about using Terraform, but um, Terraform was mostly just for orchestration of infrastructure, as yeah. as I think usually is used. So it, it didn't really fit our use case, and because a lot of our vulnerable machines tend to be base images, right? The only process for deployment is that is is just using a base image, which is why you don't need to like run playbooks on these images, or you don't need to have these um orchestration tools on there. 
I guess that's a good I point, a good right? Point, right. Mm. I think that we've ex been experimenting with sort of more like the, the, the sort of the minimal viable product we've got, and sort of we've you know seen that it's really great. But like things like having networks which are coming up very shortly, um, sort of deployed and configured in the cloud, is a little bit more complicated. Um, so a, as mm -hmm. we see, you know, sort of um, the future of TriHackMe, that the extra functionality applied there is going to be a little bit more complicated than just you know one API call to you know like deploy a machine. That's really cool, and I, I'm, I'm sure a ton of people are super excited for the for the networking capability. How would that kind of look, if I may ask, right? Even on even on the front end, would you okay let kind of the player or the designer like draw a little network map and put machines here and there, or how do you envision that all coming together? If again, not I don't want any trade secrets, but whatever you're cool with. <laughs> no, no, that is good. It, the fantastic thing is to just give you a bit of background. Like that my my dissertation, I worked on the network, so I had a lot of time to be able to research and I could fit Uni and Try Hack Me in together. That's awesome. Um, so I, we've always built up like Try Hack Me to be as flexible as possible. So as Shu mentioned, that it's API driven, not just the calls to our cloud infrastructure, but the platform itself. Um, you know, in the whole room sort of model that we've got, being able to clone, repurpose, and, you know, um, enter in different rooms, again, flexibility. And I wanted to apply the same stuff to networks so that networks can be used within cough. It can be used as a, like of a more CTF based um, idea that can be implemented as a, its own course. So how it's designed at the moment is you can physically um, have your network. Um, you can upload it using the same sort of um, principles that is done now. Um, you can give it some extra, um, details um, and exactly like you said, it just sort of creates the the network for you, um, and you can deploy w once it's uploaded and you've added in the extra extra details. You will be able to just deploy your own network and um, mm -hmm. tear it down and bring it back up relatively, um, you know, simpli uh, sim simply. So so yeah, it's yeah, it's good. I'm excited for it. I've spent a while making it all sort of functional, and yeah, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to add a lot more. Um, teaching a lot more of the security concepts through networks is going to be great. That sounds that super, cool. super cool. And I mean, I love the fa I love hearing that you're excited about it. Like, hey, that's going to be a really great win for the community and all the people that want to create and build and, and play in that. Um, and I know the same. I may remember you telling me about how excited you were about the King of the Hill functionality, and that has yes. been incredible, right? Right. Well, how was King of the Hill? What building that, making that, the reception? What what can you what can you help me understand in that whole new release on the King of the Hill game type? Um, so I think I think it initially started out as so Ben and I are just constantly throwing ideas at each other, and and one of these ideas was um it's 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 just like messages at like any time of the day, which which is quite cool because we just we tend to get like very overexcited. Yeah. Um, but one of the messages was, I, I just messaged Ben and I was like, oh, we don't actually have any anything like collaborative on the platform because it tends to be someone just enters a room. Um, and then and then Ben comes back saying that, oh, like what would make it even more fun is if people collaborate, but there, but it, it has a competitive element to it. And, and, th and then that sort of, um, that sort of brought about this whole idea of how do we actually develop something that's fun to play? You know, you get to work with other people, but at the same time, there's an element of competition involved. And then I think, um, I think Ben Ben mentioned earlier that, or when we were talking, that someone in the community was just talking about how like these competitions are done, right, Ben? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More to say on that probably. Yeah, yeah. So I had the initial idea for like a competitive hacking game. Um, and yeah, we spoke about it in the community. And like again, a key part of, of speaking to people and in, in, in the in the chat is that someone else said, I can't remember who it was. Um, that's awful. Um, I think it was definitely one of the key members of it in the in the community said like, Hey, we do this at school. Um, you know, we've done this at college, and this is how it's worked. And that was me that the sent you the documentation because I do red team competing against uh, blue teams that are given a bunch of boxes to defend. And it's eight hours of them getting uh, mentally abused by us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, so yeah, that that's sort of the, the initial idea of like speaking to people, getting that idea, and and then we just kind of ran with it, and we did a trial, and it went down really well. And after sort of doing the tweaks, releasing it, it was, it was fantastic. We have a lot more ideas for Koth. It's just finding the time to implement it. How do you guys plan out, I guess, that the box or the whole vulnerable room that they kind of move in between keeping it, okay, an easy difficulty so that anyone can work with it or a harder, more difficult box? What what sort of mental mind mapping does that take? 
I can probably mm-hmm. speak to this one. For mm-hmm. King of the Hill, it's a little bit different. General Box mentality, I actually just gave a talk about this at Sarkon. Nice. Where you have an idea of you can you have a kill chain that it's it's the same as like a kill chain on an assessment that you can work backwards from it and you almost make yourself a map of how you want to have things planned out where you look at major points where you have your entry point, you have your privilege escalation, what enumeration do you want your users to be able to do? And depending on the level of extra just things you throw in there, like extra ports that are open, extra programs that are installed and running on the computer, you know, that escalates your difficulty and you can tweak it from there. Uh, King of the Hill, I know Ben and Ashu can probably speak to this quite a bit, but you take that and you essentially spread it out laterally. So you have four or five different kill chains per box that each user is a little bit different that you have to get up to that root level. Mm. That's yep, super yeah, cool. I, I guess, yeah, the, one, one of the main ideas was that we wanted this defending element for King of the Hill, right? It, it Or like, it, it wasn't just hacking into a box. It's how do you stop other people hacking? And 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 part of that, part of that defending aspect was we need to have multiple ways in because if you just have like an SSH connection or an, or an RDP connection, someone could change the password to that service or turn that service off, right? Which wouldn't make it fun. So, we'll, so the idea was that if there are like multiple services or multiple programs opening, when someone becomes king or when someone roots the box, they'll be like, oh my God, I have, I have like five, six different things I need to turn off while other people are hacking into those five, six different things. So that part is what we thought would be quite fun for people taking part in King, king of the Hill. Yeah, we, you, Ashu and I, when our, we did, we met at an internship in London, and there was a day where we were, we both pwned one of the boxes uh, on another platform, and we were both kicking each other off trying to defend it. So it, it goes back as early as that. So I was like, <laughs> why did my connection die? Log back on. I was like, a shoe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Has has the gameplay kind of been what you expected it to be between okay both the red team adversarial stuff that people are doing to break in but even the blue team stuff because I always feel like when I'm playing King of the Hill like man I I stink at getting the defensive stuff put in place but it's not like anyone can bring oh here's an here's an elk stack here's my bro logs it, it, it's it's different and that it's a okay quick one hour game and you've got a little poor man's environment to try and patch and, and keep secure. Um, yeah, so I, I think, we, like, so far in TriHackMe, we actually don't have a lot of blue team content. Yeah. Um, I think a majority of the blue team content on there is John's. Uh, but so so we've, we, we've not actually explored the idea of having, like, you know, having, like, elk stack running or having Steam solutions running where people could look at logs. That would be quite cool. Um, but so that that's something there's definitely like room for in the future. But in terms of the gameplay, I think it's been fantastic. Um, we like we we release co-op and like Ben said, we love to experiment things, trial things, just push things out all the time. And the reception has been like quite fantastic. There there are tons of games running every day, and we've been getting a lot of feedback that people have been enjoying co-op. What the was meta the for that game? I'm sorry, has almost been like a it, the meta has almost evolved like an arms race for the red team side of things where you see people starting off with, you know, of course people wanted to use things like auto scripts because there was a small pool of boxes initially. Um, that's not something that we allow at this point, but, you know, watching this arms race evolve that we can go through and react to it and say that, okay, maybe we don't want to allow some of these things, but it forces people to get better and faster at uh, their, I guess, hacking in that aspect. And we can go through and actually develop the blue set or blue team side of things from that, where we can see, you know, what are we missing with content that we need to add to the site or specifically, you know, what needs to be there on the box for the blue team to effectively be able to defend themselves. Blue team's really hard, really hard man. man. It's really hard <laughs> to get blue team stuff in. <laughs> and it's, it is harder than red in real life. We've yeah. seen that over yeah. and over again that, I mean, historically blue team gets its butt kicked by red okay. most of the time. Which is, I mean, it's something that industry on the whole has been facing, adjusting to having blue team be a little bit more balanced against red team. You can't just use the chatter binary to lock one of your password files <laughs> <laughs> in real life. Especially if you, like, you you put a little time bomb in the chatter binary that blows up your shell like some of the bots. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people have been really creative with how they've made their cough boxes or even like, you know, the players have been able to upload their own binaries and have their own tricks. It's really great to see. That's mm-hmm. cool. 
What was the what was the driving force in kind of making Koth free to play? Because I remember, hey, at the beginning, this is just hey subscribers only. Let's kind of test the water here. Did you always want it to be free, or was that a, like, hey, this is a, a huge success. Let's give this to the world. What were your thoughts with whole that that whole strategy? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess then like jump in here in case I just don't remember correctly. But like when whenever we, when when we did release Koth, we. I, I think we were thinking about monetizing it, but then because we tend to run things as experiments, we were like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll run it for free. Um, so we had this one week experiment where we were like, okay, let's leave Koth open for free and let's see how it goes. And uh, we got like a crazy amount of uptake in terms of the active users playing Koth that week. So we were like, oh, look, wow, people are enjoying it, right? So like, why, why should we lock it down or why should we lock down the base model where people can go hack against their friends? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That's really cool. The, 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 the conversation, conversation of monetization and funding is always like a hard one to have, but it's really interesting from a, the creative standpoint of like, what, what should we gatekeep is not the right word, but I, I guess that's what I, I come to think. Uh, Cause like, oh look, we're, we all want to do this, right? We all want to train. We all want to like teach people. We all want to learn and exercise and sharpen our, our cybersecurity skills. So it's, it's weird when you want to make that a uh, endeavor and money <laughs> for yourself, yeah. but I think you guys have just hit the hail, hit the nail on the head. Like the, try hack me, it's really simple in what it asks for and what it doesn't. Yeah, it's yeah. like monetization has always been like, like like you said, a very a very tough conversation. But but like it it's quite cool that having like the two or three of us like on try hack me means that we get to make like our own decisions, right? Or we get we get to like sort of do whatever we want. And and the fact that, you know, we can make like certain rooms free for a week or we can make all free, that like that freedom is quite cool, quite exciting. So I never asked and I wanted to. I I beat myself up because I forgot to, but th this is this is it, right? Like you guys are the team. Is is there anyone else that is helping out or do you is it what is it? What is it? I mean First of all, we've had like massive help from the community. So everyone, like mm -hmm. if you're a community mentor, yeah, you know, if you're a room creator, a room tester, like the community's been like again key um, in, in moving try hack me forward. But yeah, at the moment it's just us. Um, we're hoping to bring somebody else on. Um, we're just gonna write up a job advertisement to help out with the development um, and sort of grow from there. I mean, wow, right? <laughs> like, that's pretty awesome and kind of incredible. And I'm sure it's got to be a good feeling to be at the spot where you can put out some, I guess, some job advertisement because that, that's got to feel really real. Yeah, yeah, it does. And it comes back to the, you know, the awkward conversation of monetization. But, mm. You know, having a, a freemium model that allows people to come and learn for free. There's so much free content on the platform as well as you know, subscription only. Um, so making, I think, yeah, making use of that is, is going to be great. Cool. cool. With the with the community tie-in that you mentioned, right? So I know you guys have the Discord server, and I kind of want to zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, I know that, hey, that's for the community that cultivates the whole environment, and I know you use that to get some feedback. How do you enjoy that platform? Is that the right platform for you? Does does that do everything that you need to, or what other forms of feedback do you get, and how, etc.? Um. So yeah, I think, like, so so John Jewel was like, I think the biggest driving force behind the Discord. I think Ben and I was always it was always like our, our our thought process was always like, oh, we, we want to talk to users. Like that's how we want to build out Try Hack Me. I think before that it was it was the very standard methods of surveys, emails, phone calls where we could that that's actually how like we got dark involved. We were like we saw yeah. him as like sort of an active user and we were like, Oh, do you mind hopping on for a call for like twenty minutes? And you know, now we're here. Um so I think Discord has been insane in terms of like how we communicate with our users because it's not just getting opinions on on features and boxes released, but we also have people filing bug reports filing feedback through Discord, which is, I think, really, really cool. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, I have my yeah, have cheesy my Discord server, and I just love it to I hang out with everyone. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, 
can I ask, I mean, looking forward, what other things do you plan on bringing in to try hack me? So I know you mentioned, okay, we've got the networking capability coming soon. I know you want to pour more into cough. There's one thing that I saw, and it was a community question as well when I was kind of poking around asking people, what is that university coming soon tab? <laughs> <laughs> That's been there for a while. Yeah. Um, create there's so many things have happened. Um, just that was put on hold. It's we want to have, um, you know, be able to have universities um, sign up um, and sort of have like a separate leaderboard so that students can compete against each other. We've see, we, we work with one university in the UK and, and it was requested that we had a, like a, a university only leaderboard that they could, you know, sort of hack against their friends and see who's the best. And I think like this whole gamification and activity type, you know, um, sort of model w works really well. Um, so having a sort of all your friends at uni sort of to compete against, I think it's going to help um, yeah, help them sort of, you know, move forward in terms of um, <clears throat> their learning. That's really cool. I certainly would have loved that when I was at university. <laughs> I would have had a lot more fun. <laughs> I know as the, uh, oh, sorry. No, no, sorry. And now I was just going to say, what, I guess one of the other things we're trying to work on is we're just trying to like improve user experience heavily because we know that, you know, like one part of learning is having content available and having this whole platform and infrastructure available. But we're trying to see, or we're trying to build processes into Try Hack Me that would sort of make it easier for people to learn. Because I think, and I think this this might purely be like a user experience thing, but like we, we want to look at more ways that Try Hack Me can actually aid in learning. Um, and that's that's been quite a quite a difficult conversation or just difficult set of questions we've had to ask ourselves because it's, it's so broad, but it's something I guess that could have a, a very big impact. One thing I know I'm looking forward to, um, and this is new for me because obviously we I, I was really happy and had a lot of fun putting out Peak Hill, my, my new room that I sent over to you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I felt so bad just nagging you, Ben, <laughs> like over and over again. I'm so sorry. I need to push a patch. <laughs> I'd rather repatch, um, you know, done the intended way. So no worries. I, th I think, as, as you said, that things like that, like extra features to be able to just, you know, um, update your machine that's, you know, you've deployed and sort of replace your image with it, I think it's going to be great and really helpful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think from from the creator perspective, because I just feel bad pinging you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, it's, um, it's uh, something that's um, requested heavily. Um, and people, are, I think it's really interesting to see the unintended ways, you know, to sort of when you're pwning a machine, it's um, yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool. So being able to patch it straight away. Thanks for uh, getting on that. You seem to be hot on. In oh, it's funny. Oh, oh, I Ben think left. We us. Might have lost him for a moment. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is awesome, guys. Very long. No, I'm sure he'll he'll catch it real soon. Thank you guys again and again for doing this. This is this is yeah, really super cool. Yeah, thank you for cool. having us. Yeah, thanks thanks for having us. Um, I guess as far as other content goes, I know it's been brought up a couple of times and I'm sure you mentioned this, but expanding blue team content is another big thing that we're looking at. Expanding that defender uh, aspect just because it's it's something that it's very, there's a lot of widely taught, you know, this is how you can break into things. There's a lot of, you know, a fair number of platforms that are teaching that right now, but having that mm -hmm. increased coverage on blue team. I'm looking forward to, that. forward to that. Ben's back. Ben's back. Hey, sorry about that. What did I miss? Dark was just filling in for a, he's like, oh, I guess I get a, I better take the mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited for the for all the blue team stuff because it's basically us just going to be like, Dark, can you please like look through all this? Or Dark, can you can you just like look through this million page doc on like what blue team stuff we can get out there? But yeah, but yeah it's going to be a really weird conversation of, yeah, so can I stand up a, a full sim environment on uh, like these boxes? And I just need you to give it like, I don't know. How is it? Eight gigs of RAM sound? <laughs> <laughs> Numbers only going to go up. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, I know we're, we're kind of getting. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Because in terms of other things that we're looking into, I think, yeah, I, I don't know if it was said or not, but the more learning pathways um, for sure and continuing the sort of pushing out more, uh, more content. So. Uh, so I feel bad because I feel like I've neglected, like personally, I haven't looked too much into the whole learning path 
feature and functionality. Has that had a lot of success? Do you feel like that is, is good at where it's at? Does that get the reception you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so we've seen that a lot of people on Dry Hackney like using the learning paths. So a lot of the, yeah, so I'm trying to think what the breakdown is. Um, but I, I think all of them are, are, very, are very well received because the main point of going to a learning path is because the rooms are so modular, it's so easy to slot them in different ways. And yeah. the learning path provides the structure of going into a, a particular room. And I, I, think, I think people like that structure, especially when they're learning content um, that, that they've probably not seen before. So learning paths have been, have been quite popular. I love that, I love that dichotomy that. just between a, a walkthrough room and a challenge room because the, the challenge room obviously is like, hey, we're not going to hold your hand. We're not going to give you any guidance. Just here's an IP address. Go. Uh, and some people are used to that and really, really like that. But I mean, as you said, for the beginners, the newcomers, the people that are just like, hey, I'm getting my feet wet and I don't know what to do. That's why I always kind of tout try hack me is like they'll, they'll literally hold your hand and walk you through it. And they, they're up front with the write ups. So. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The the idea has always been to sort of to to, to make the learning more efficient and 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 so, yeah. So, so some people do like the IP address structure, but we've seen that you know putting the content out there and that being handholdy is quite like like efficient for learning. And then what what we tend to see is people people who go through a bunch of walkthroughs then move on to challenges once their skill levels have been raised. So the whole walkthrough this is challenge thing fits in quite well. And having that flexibility on the rooms on Trihackney has worked has worked quite well. Super cool. Super cool. I'm sure the learning paths the just like mag like multiply that because now you've got hey here's a collection of those guided rooms to learn and you don't accidentally hop into a little challenge. Challenge. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. We're almost at like a little 45 minute mark. Uh, I don't want to be holding too much of your guys' time. Um, is there anything else that like we haven't discussed or we haven't brought up that you really want to bring some spotlight to or you want to chat about? If not, that's totally cool. <laughs> I guess I guess just 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 one thing to mention is that it's probably off late, but or going back to when we picked up from Act from like really massive growth is that we, we've had a really good team of, of content creators come on. And um, so, yeah, John, Ben and I are just going to look at the submissions. Um, mm -hmm. So just also want to give want to give them like a massive shout out to people from the community and other people developing content. Um, because I, I, I think it's quite cool that, or at least the way we do content creation is quite interesting because it's not just box submissions and rejections. It's sort of people submit boxes and then it's probably, a lot of it is dark guiding them through how to build better boxes, how to also part of that is how to write better technical content. Um, and then the end result is having really good content come out, which our users appreciate. So yeah. I think massive, massive shout out to people that have been pushing out content off late. Yeah, I, I have a firm belief that any submission, and this goes for anyone that wants to submit content on that, it's okay to fail. Any submission, you have a, a goal there and it, we can get it up to that, uh, the standard that we look for and you can learn from that. It, you know, I've mentioned this, uh, I think the other day that, you know, submitting a box, making something like that, it is, you know, it's a resume item. It's something that helps build you up because you're learning a lot. And even then, as you were seeing, John, that finding those unintentional paths, you learn a lot from just having something you made get beat on. Absolutely. <laughs> I had to reiterate what uh, Ashu was saying. Massive shout out to everyone in the community that does content dev and our community staff members as well. Mm -hmm. I love, the, I love the way just you guys handle it because I mean, it's super surreal seeing and talking with the three of you. Cause we know like, Hey man, that's, that's the core. That's where it's at. But all of you have just been super supportive and always approachable. Uh, it sounds like that's how, what I've always heard when chatting with the community, like, we love hanging out with the Try Hack Me guys because they're nice and friendly and they talk to us. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to think we all bite just a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's true. And cough, we, at least. We'll, we'll, we'll bite it when we're playing the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So my last question that I like to end on for some kind of stuff like this is um, – Obviously, we all want to do this sort of thing, right? We love cybersecurity is our passion. We love teaching. We love learning. We love sharing the knowledge. So if someone wanted to put together their 
like their their dog and pony show, their try hack me, their form of of teaching people and helping the community grow. What is your best advice to that person? What do they need to know? What languages? What program? What techs? Hard skills and soft skills. What do you tell someone that wants to do something awesome like this? I think try to figure out how you learn, how well, how you feel that you learned information security. How did you, what is effective for you and work off of there and Ben and Ashu can expand on that. Yeah, I think, I think more onto, onto building, building a, like a product or a platform, right? Like try me. I think something that's worked really, really well for me and Ben is like being like data driven. So I, it, it sounds super cliche, but I think a while back, we, we started feeding in like data points into term, in terms of like how users use the platform, what do they engage with best, and having something to refer back to, like having a tangible thing to see is really, really useful because that like sort of helps you guide like your vision for the product, right? Like you can see, oh, a user is going to this room or a user is using this feature. Um, how many users like it and whether like, and you can use that to basically improve your product. And that's something we've, we've learned of, of like, I guess the past year. Yeah. User engagement, I think for me, I think it's huge. I think, you know, the way you deliver content, the way that, you know, if it's a video that how you speak, if it's, you know, the type of hands on material that you're providing user engagement, I think, I think it's really key. And like, if you want to like build something like try hack me or your own version, I think having. You know, it doesn't have to be really fleshed out. You can sort of learn, you know, Node.js or, you know, Python, you know, different frameworks in order to like make and push something out. As long as you, you know, even if it's just one machine and you're, you know, just sort of, you know, using that as your, you know, minimal viable product. And I think that's great. But for me, it's, you know, to answer that question, it's definitely user engagement. Awesome. Awesome. I love that answer. Love that answer. It's, all, it's all about, it's all the, about people. the people. It's all about the people who use it. Yeah, use it. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, well, hey that's, everything that's everything that at least I had in my mind that I wanted to chat with you guys about. Um, I don't think I have to tell you. I'm obviously a humongous fan. Uh, you guys have been doing phenomenal work, and you keep killing it. And I'm and I'm happy to. It's grateful for the opportunity to hang out with you guys and spend some time together. So this has been a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us, John. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be right